Welcome to Let's Rap. I am Derek Carr. I am your host, and I have my lovely ladies with me, Lisa Crutcher Thurman and Ebony Egram Jones. Wow. Today, we will talk about success um, in all different ways. Success, spiritual success, uh, professional success, and just success, period. So let's do what we do. Let's rap. So uh, having said that, Lisa, what does success mean to you? What does success look like? Well, I think it means a sense of contentment within yourself. Like um, some, as a teacher, I feel very successful with my class. Um, seems to gain the knowledge of what I'm trying to teach. I feel it was a successful lesson kind of thing, but I don't feel the need to have to write the whole curriculum. You know, some might think that would be successful. Mm -hmm. Totally successful when I feel like that which I've set out to do, to do had been accomplished. Cool. So Ebony, what does success look like to you? Um, I think success is not necessarily like achieving one thing or another, but I think you can be successful if you are actively doing things that are pushing you towards your life's goal or what the Lord has called or fashioned you to do in life. So um, success could look like a lot of things. Success could look like feeding the hungry. Success could look like giving a hug to someone <clears throat> need or in grief um so success just looks like you are living in your um god ordained purpose absolutely absolutely so success to me is not so much um uh, i guess of a state uh mm -hmm. success is a feeling to me okay uh, because if you feel successful in something that you set out to achieve then you'll be successful mm -hmm. are you successful by your own standards i mean so uh, if I, I consider it a process, would you say, Alisa? I said I consider it like a process. It also. is. So mm -hmm. success is a journey, not a sprint. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be. Uh, it's a thing you have to work at. So that's what a journey is. It's something you go on and you meet as you go and become who you are. That's a journey. It's it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so success. You know I love a good acrostic. So mm -hmm. uh, success. The S is sense of direction. The U is understanding. C is courage. The other C is charity. The E is esteem. S is self-confidence. And then S is self-acceptance. Uh, so success is all of those things, but it is so different for each person. Mm -hmm. Because what I think is successful, you may not think is successful enough. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. so... That's why I think success is a personal journey and it's a personal attitude, concept. It's all about you. So my success or how I feel successful may not be that way to you, but what I don't see, you may feel like it is successful. I don't, I don't know. It's just all about what other people see and what they visualize and what your um, I, what you identify as success. Mm -hmm. So today, when I say let's rap, I want to talk about this because people get so caught up in what success looks like. Mm -hmm. And they are so determined to look like other people. This is where I think social media plays a big part. Yeah. I think life plays a big part because pastor says it all the time. You always talk about people's glory but you don't know what right. it took to get there. Right. You don't know what they sacrifice. You don't know what they go through. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people don't know what we go through Correct. Uh, to get where we are. You know, Ebony, I couldn't imagine studying law. I couldn't imagine reading and writing all day long. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. And mm -hmm. that's nothing I want to do. Lisa, I couldn't <laughs> imagine teaching for 20 something years. Yeah. I and school age. Yeah, because these are some new people these days. These are not the same people that, you know, we were. I'm not even who were, you know, at least when you was in school. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, I couldn't see that. But just because I couldn't see it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. And it's not so for you all. Uh, so I think success is, is definitely a personal thing. And I think that's one thing that 
is left out and your success and how it was determined, you should celebrate small wins. Mm -hmm. So when I say that, well, not even that, Derek, to go back to what you were saying, how you mm -hmm. couldn't imagine reading all day and writing all day. But that's because you don't want to be a lawyer. That doesn't necessarily Absolutely. mean that your Absolutely. success or your worth or your value or your life's purpose <laughs> is any less than mine. It just means that's not what you do. Absolutely. So, I'm not doing what Lisa does or what Derek does, but that doesn't mean I'm deficient or I yeah. don't have purpose or I'm not successful. So I think people get twisted up in that too. If yeah. I'm not doing things that cost a hundred million dollars or this or that, then I'm not successful. No, the devil is alive. Yes, yeah. do it all. Absolutely, I agree. That's a good point, Ebony. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So, Lisa, oh. Uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about, and I, I, I just see you answering this, and I could be wrong, but I know you, so I'm going to go ahead and go with it. <laughs> One thing that will help you be successful is to visualize your success. Mm -hmm. What What is that to you, Lisa? Visualizing your success, and how have you done that? Well, I got the success being a journey, and I always have had to take baby steps and. When I first got to college, I said, oh, Lord, if you just let me get to be a, go through my sophomore year. So it's two years as freshman and sophomore year. I feel like I've done something. Mm -hmm. And once I got there, I was like, well, it wasn't so bad. Let me see. Okay, God, if you just let me graduate to get mm -hmm. my bachelor's degree. Right. And, you know, through it all. And I just kept saying, putting one foot in front of the other. That's only way I was able to do it. I cannot ever look at the whole picture, even, you know, with weight loss, well, mm -hmm. or lack of right now, but <laughs> if you lose just one pound a week, you know, at least mm -hmm. you're working towards something. That's right. successful to me. It ain't yeah. got the whole 50 pounds off, but one pound at a time, just mm -hmm. baby stepping. And as long as you keep going, I think you got a chance. You mm. give up, then that's when you cease to be successful. But as right. long as you're working toward it, I think we can consider it success. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ebony, I got another one for you. So this one, and again, I don't know, but I just got a feeling after working with you ladies for the last couple of uh, shows, weeks, and since last season, uh, the second one, be 100% committed. Mm. So, and the reason why I ask you that is because you have to be. Uh. <laughs> so, okay. can you talk a little bit about that just being 100 percent committed sure um one thing because you always say pastor says but one thing that pastor has said in the past that has really really stuck with me is that a big shot is nothing but a little shot that kept shooting oh my god yes yes Jill be committed to yes. hit your target. Yes. Be committed to executing and finishing something. Um, people who graduate college are no less or more smarter than people who don't. They They're are just consistent. They're just 100% committed to finishing, to completing, to doing the thing that they set out to do. Do not renegotiate. Um, certain things in your life like sometimes you do need to go to the drawing board and say hey maybe this isn't what I want to do but if you know that you know that you know that this is what you were supposed to do and that you set out to do it for a reason you got to stick with it absolutely and that's part of the reason why I went back to school back to law school at the ripe old age of what 37 because I had said a long time ago what I was going to do with my life and made excuses for years as to why I didn't do that. And I was like, nope, not anymore. I am going to do what I set out to do. And it may look different than what everybody else's life looks like, but that's what it's going to be. So you definitely have to be committed to completing the thing um, that, you, that God has identified for your life and that you have said um, you want to do. Absolutely. I love that. I, I, you know, I forgot about Pastor saying that, but I do remember him saying that, you know, a uh, big shot is just a, a little shot who just kept on shooting. Sorry. And that's what you got to do is keep, keep shooting. shooting. Mm -hmm. So the one I wanted to talk about is don't let your comfort zone hold you back. Uh. Um, 
And that is a spiritual issue. You know, a lot of times we are afraid to step out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and we don't understand that uncomfortability brings change. Mm -hmm. Uncomfortability makes us better than we've been. You know, and uncomfortability makes us, okay, I'm uncomfortable, something has to change. Mm -hmm. And I have to do something different, whether it be good or bad, but you get to make that decision, right. which way you're gonna go. Uh, I'll never forget when Pastor asked me to be over the college age ministry, I was like, and do what? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, Derek, I just see it in you. I believe in you, mm -hmm. you can do it. And then I'm like, do what? <laughs> so then that whole program kind of developed because he let me feel my way. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't dictate. He just said, hey, just do this. I want you to find a way to gravitate towards the kids and let them be the bridge of the liaison between the church and the, and the students needs. Mm -hmm. And let's bridge them together and let's integrate them into the church. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a big feat. I mean, these kids are from everywhere different places you know some of them don't even have a church background mm -hmm. so okay. just being authentic and being myself i was able to form those relationships and with the help of god because some of these are new kids you know yeah. they're different than when i was in school mm -hmm. so just the fact that i was uncomfortable but i pushed through my uncomfortableness mm -hmm. and believed my pastor and move forward to that. Well, it's the same thing with spirituality. It's the same thing with work. You know, a lot of times when we don't see ourselves doing something, chances are we not gonna do it. Correct. You have to speak life into every situation that is presented to you. And then when you pray, you know, God's gonna not, uh, he's not gonna let us be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can, you might as well get over that. You, you're just not gonna be comfortable because if you're comfortable, then you're stagnant. You're not moving. You're not doing anything. Because yeah. we know that when you push to do something, you're going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable. But you cannot let your comfort zone hold you back. Because yeah. it will. You know, yeah. it will. One of the things that I um, just keep in the forefront of my mind and that I let my children know consistently, the greatest enemy of your best is that good thing mm -hmm. the thing yeah. that makes you feel good when things are yeah. smooth sailing and everything's going well you don't really see the what's the purpose of me doing something different i'm doing wow. i'm straight this is good you know i'm i can do what i want to do i can and th that type of thing good can oftentimes prevent you from reaching what it is that you should reach so you and got your full potential uh -huh. reaching your full potential yeah. You know, it, even though I'm doing well, but I could be doing better. You yes. know, even though I have a spiritual walk, but it can mm -hmm. always be better. Always. You know, I have a relationship with Christ, but it can always be better. You know, right. I can always read my word more. Sometimes I just need to be quiet and mm -hmm. listen to what he says. You know, one thing that I've always learned from Lisa is write it down. You know, she told us, write it down. You know, write down what you want. Write down what you need. Write down what you even want to be. Mm -hmm. And then become somebody that you never even thought you could be, Correct. you know, but you have to just continue to push and move at that. Uh, Lisa, was you going to say something? I thought you. Okay. No, I'm just so. soaking this in. This is for me. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I didn't have no idea when we started yeah. this. I'm just yeah. seeing all kind of things as far as, you know, I'm not the most organized or neat person. Like she said, just say you are and work yeah. toward doing that. And because yes. I mean, it's not that I'm lazy because I work every day, all day. It's just certain right. things that I don't want to do. Wanna do. Oh, and <laughs> listening to you right now, you can do it. Just you got to yeah. push your way through it. Push. push. And, and we say a, a corporate term that we use all the time is the low hanging fruit. So yeah. those things that you can yeah. grab quickly, mm -hmm. let's okay. go ahead and celebrate those. Let's grab those quickly. Let's do what we need to do and let's use it as a catalyst to get going. So like I work out in the gym mm, um, okay. and 95% of the time mm. is getting to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> but once you get there, then, you know, you ready, you get, you do what you need to do, but it's just getting there. And that's the same thing with your spirituality. That's the same thing with your profession. That's the same thing with something you want to accomplish. Just getting there, get the start. 
just start on it. And I promise you, that's why the song we used to sing all the time, uh, one step, if I make just one yeah, step, yeah. he will do the rest. And we have to really believe that he will do the rest. So you just take that one, that one step. Uh, Martin Luther King had a quote that said, it's not our job to see the whole staircase. All we had to do is take the first step mm -hmm. and the rest will come. It's not our job to see the whole staircase. It's just to take that one step and then you just keep going. A lot of times, because we know steps are already the same, same height, the same dimension. We walk in steps our whole life. So a lot of times we don't even look down. We just start the first step. You got to look at the first step because you don't know how high it is, how low it is, how steep it is. But you look at the first step, but nine times out of 10, you just walk after that. And that's the same thing we do with our faith. That's the same thing we do with our journey. Whatever it is that we need to do, you take that one step. As long as God is in that and you pray and ask him to give you the strength to do it, you are, you already halfway there. So the other one is seek passion. Mm -hmm. um, find something you're passionate about. Now, Ebony, I know you can speak on this and Lisa, to the passion for the students and then Ebony, the passion to seek to be a lawyer. You know, keep moving. So whoever wants to go first, yeah, tell me something about seeking passion. Well, my thing, I know I always have a few parents that say, my child doesn't want to read, my child won't read. Mm, you ain't found what your child want to know about. If you can, they all into what the time was like Pokemon. You get some Pokemon books, they're going to read. Because that's, you, like you say, you got to find your passion. Something that would interest them or interest you to keep you going to want, make you want to get the low hanging fruit to keep trying to get higher and higher. That's I awesome. That. That's awesome. Awesome. Ev, tell me a little bit about seeking passion. Yeah, seeking passion, I, I think that's kind of an interesting way to put it because when I think of passion, I think of something that just automatically lights you up. It's not something that you're actually looking for because if you're already lucky, in. mm -hmm. you, it's already in you and it just is activated by circumstances or by other people. And so, like she said, um, kids will will discover their passions just by living life. And nine times out of ten, especially if you all are, if anybody's around our age, we've probably ran into some things that have ignited a fire in us. And we have just been intimidated by the idea of becoming that or doing that. But it doesn't mean that you don't know what it is. Oh, you probably do know what it is. You just are scared or, you know, you don't feel like that you can do it. So, um, yeah, not I, I wouldn't think that people are need to necessarily, quote unquote, find their passion. It's all about having the, the courage to look at your passion and pursue it. Absolutely. And then fine tune those inaptabilities that God has already given you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I, I was reading a book, it's called Shift Your Thinking. And one interesting thing is one of the questions it asks, do you find yourself focusing on your weaknesses or on your strengths? So at first I didn't know how to answer that because I was like, oh, naturally I'm going to focus on my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But that's the that's the absolute opposite of what you should do. You okay. should focus on your strengths. And okay. as you fine tune and focus on your strengths, which is generally things that God has given you, your talents and your abilities, mm -hmm. then you will see your weaknesses start to diminish. They don't even matter because a lot of times those are things that you're trying to operate outside of your shape. Mm -hmm. A lot of your weaknesses are things that are just not you. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes focusing on why would you spend time focusing on something that's just not you? Correct. You know, focus on your strengths. Get your strengths together. You know, one of my strengths and my like I told you, my legacy, I want to be an encourager. Mm -hmm. I want to speak life to people. I want my words to speak after my soul has passed and moved on. I want my words to still speak. I want them to speak to speak life to people. So in order to do that, I have to continue to read. I have to fill myself with things that are going to give me that knowledge and that ability to speak those things to people. I can't be tripping. I can't not fill my tank. You know, that's what I have to do if that's what I if that's my goal and what I want to do to people and what I want to live uh, leave for them. So, you know, this is uh, some one example of that. 
So one thing that I think is important when you're talking about success, and this is something that we don't do enough, and this is even spirituality, and it's spiritual. Eliminate toxic people from your life. Oh, uh, that's important. And then another layer to that, you cannot tell everybody your dreams. You can't tell everybody everything that you want to do because how many people would have told you, Ebony, at 37, that you going back to law school is ridiculous? You know, come on. It's just you can't tell everybody everything. Yeah. You have to pray, ask God for direction and strength. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just can only talk to him. You know, you get them few people that are roots in your life. They give you nourishment and strength and guidance. And you tell them roots and you leave them branches and leaves alone because they'll mess you up every time. You stick with those roots and mm -hmm. those are the ones that will keep you going and keep you motivated. But mm -hmm. you have to eliminate those toxic people. And I don't like the word eliminate because we're not really, that's to me, we should never throw anyone away mm -hmm. because everybody has some good to them. They just not may not be good for you. Mm -hmm. So you just love them with a long handle spoon. You know, you love them from a distance and you just move on. And so everybody's not for you. I was about to order this t-shirt the other day. I'm not for everybody. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. And you're not. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just have to move from having toxic people in our space where we're trying to grow spiritually, professionally, emotionally. Those people do not have a place in there. So we need to remove them from those places. And sometimes um, what I have learned, especially when I um, decided to go back to school, um, was that people are not necessarily toxic. It's just that people are limited by their own lives. That's a better so word. Yeah. I had um, shared, you know, when I first got into law school, I didn't initially tell everybody. But what I told a person that I thought would be very happy for me. And when I shared it with her, her response broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Because unlike everybody else who was so excited, oh, congratulations. She was like, well, why are you doing that? There are so many people who go to law school and then when they get out of law school, they don't make any money and they have all this student loan debt. And it was just like, oh, wow. Okay. You know. But after I took the time to assess who they were and how their lives had played out at that point, I had to tell myself, Ebony, you cannot get caught up in the limited perceptions of other people yep. and um and i think that she was telling me that really she thought she was giving me some sound advice or something to think about um but that's only because that's where her life had had taken her to some very limiting circumstances so um they may not be toxic they just may be limited yeah you just have to pray like for them that. you know they grow that's a better word see yeah. things a little different Yep, that's a better word, limited. And that's what it is. And then everybody is not going to see the vision that God gives you. Because it ain't for them to see. Absolutely. It ain't for them to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's not for them to see. Mm -hmm. And one of the last things I wanted us to talk about that just makes it plain and simple when it comes to success, this is the key to everything. This is spiritual success, professional success, relationship success, everything. And it's one word. And it starts with a B. And it's believe. You have mm -hmm. to believe. Got to. You have to believe. That's the center. You can't even be a Christian if you don't believe. Absolutely. You know, we have to believe. That's the center of our very existence and being. We have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He rose on the third day. You know, Easter. I mean, it, that is the Super Bowl of Christianity. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, because as he took our place. It should have been us. We don't deserve any blessings. We don't deserve anything that we get. But he took our place. Mm -hmm. And because he did that, we have to believe. In order, we have to believe. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a lawyer, you have to believe. If you want to be a school teacher mm -hmm. and have a 20 plus year career, you mm -hmm. have to believe. You know, if you want to leave a legacy, you have to believe first before you do anything. Before it even comes to fruition, you have to believe. Um, yeah. So that's the key. So what, what are you all's thoughts on that? And then we'll wrap up. This Lisa, you go I on. Talking a lot. Okay. <laughs> I, I totally agree. You believe. And like I said, I'm 
total proponent of writing things down because it's not just going to happen and you're not just going to start here and get there. You got to have some steps. And yep. I'm what come to my mind right now, you have to have a plan for even when people show up and have their not negative comments, whether they're intentional or not, and have your strategy for how you're going to deal with that. And yep. as you pray about it, God will give you what to say. He's done that for me so many times. There's things you want to do, and you say it might not seem reasonable to other people, but you know God put it in your heart. You got to be ready for the naysayers and have a good comeback for them. Mm-hmm. It ain't my call. I'm just following what God said for me to do. That's it. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, last thing is about success. So uh, wrap us up, Ep. What are your thoughts? Success. Um, I think if I can have a conversation about the average person about success, um, I would tell them that success is for everybody. Just like salvation is free and open to everybody, success success also is open to you um, through Christ Jesus. Um, You can be successful and your success may look different. But it is yours nonetheless. So just hold on to the belief that God has fashioned your life in a such a way that you are to succeed. So hold on to that promise. That's good. I don't think we need to say nothing. Else. I, like <laughs> that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Lisa, you have some last well, words? Well, um, the book, I think I shared this before, it's entitled Make Your Bed. It was from... Um, Navy SEAL, and he wrote about, you know, experiences and doing all that, which I knew nothing about it. But this book really, it it was on the baby step thing. Once you get up, make your bed. You've accomplished something already. And you keep putting one foot in front of the other, doing your best, headed toward what you feel that God has fashioned you to do, then you will feel successful. Absolutely. And you know, mine is easy. See it, say it, believe it, live in it. That's yes. it. See it, say it, believe it, live okay. in it. You have to see it. You have to say it. You have to believe it. And then you have to live in it and then walk that journey. And that's just like Christianity. You have to believe in Christ. You have to see him and you have to hear him. And then you believe him and then you move in him and you work in him and you find out what your passion and what he has called you to do. And then you do it. You live in it. And that's it. So I thank you again, ladies, for joining me tonight for Let's Wrap. We wrapped on an excellent topic. And what I like again about this show, and I'll keep reiterating it, is these are just basic life principles to we can talk about, discuss. And it looks, it's three different opinions coming together. Mm-hmm. But one thing that we all centered in, and that's the cross, and that's Christ, that's you know. And so we thank God for different perceptions. We thank God for different mm-hmm. ideals. And we thank God that we have been able to gel together as one and just discuss and come together and come to, I have learned so much through you ladies in these last couple of weeks and last season uh, that has made me better and that I've moved forward in uh, my life. So I thank you. I want to thank you all publicly for continuing to take your time to be my co-host on the show. And Let's Route would not be what it is without you, without you too. So well, thank, thank you, you publicly for that. And let's say a word of prayer for our viewers and then we'll let it go until we come back again next week. So let us pray. Father God, thank you for success. Thank you that we can have success in you and we can have success in life because your word says that you came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. And so that doesn't mean when we pass away, that means while we're living, you can give us life and life more abundantly. So God, forgive us for those times that we didn't aim high. Forgive us for those times that we didn't believe the things that you had already said that we could have. God, forgive us for that right now. Now, God, we ask that you push us to do the things that you would have us do. Continue to shape us and let us see those things. Make it so abundantly clear that we can no longer run from those things that you desire us to be, say, do, and whatever you need from us, God. We thank you for everyone listening who's watching this. 
But we ask that you give them a special blessing. And God, we ask for spiritual success right now in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if we seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, then all those things and desires of our hearts will be added unto us. So let us have spiritual success first. And then if you add everything else to us, like you promised in your word, and we know you're not a man that you cannot lie and your word will not return to your voice. So we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Thank you, God. If, Thank you, you know, God. a familiar passage of scripture that we will continue to quote. And for we know that all things work together for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. So we thank you in advance for spiritual success, professional you, success, uh, you, success in our, our marriages, success in our relationships. We just thank yeah. you for a whole totality of successful things. Thank in Christ you, Jesus name, we pray this all these thank things you, this day. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much for joining. Let's wrap. Amen. That is a wrap. All right, Amen. ladies, y'all have a good week. We love you. And please continue to share this link and let everybody know about Let's Wrap. Give us some comments on Facebook or whatever platform you watch on. And if you want to see something, I hear something, I say something, I want us to rap about something, let us know. Amen. All right. You have a great day. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye-bye.